Hey everybody, welcome back to the Air Warfare Group. This video is about uh, getting into DCS World War II for the first time. This is for the people out there that have considered DCS as a World War II platform, maybe haven't tried it. Uh, first, let me say that if you're into World War II sims just purely for the uh, PvP dogfight, um, the not so detailed immersion of a clickable cockpit, uh, you just want to get in there and shoot and team up with guys and do missions and stuff. There are a lot of other flight sims that might be better for you than DCS World. DCS is not for everybody. Uh, I like to describe DCS World as a teamwork simulator that challenges us in, uh, at the individual level. And for World War II birds, um, this immerses... I, I, I feel like I want to just get the smell of you know high-octane avgas in the room just so I can smell that exhaust just so I could get that feel uh, I'm using the echo 19 mod for the p51 Mustang in this video uh, and it's about it's basically just designed to get you guys to try consider this TF 51 D free module that's already included in your game you may not have touched it you may have tried it uh, it definitely works better with pedals and that's what I found uh, after going from a twist stick back in the early years to some pedals this aircraft became a dream to fly once I learned how to manage all the systems so today we're gonna get in the cockpit we're gonna take off and we're going to uh, dial back the engine so you for sustainability and we'll go through some of the systems and I'll show you some of the things that uh, that you might want to consider so sit back and enjoy uh, uh, and share with a friend if you like. So I am going to go over here to instant action. I'm going to go to the Caucasus map. Let's go ahead and shut Mr. Glenn Miller off. And he is gone. Thank you, Glenn. I'm going to go over here to TF-51D Caucasus map and I'm going to do cold start at Kreminsk. <laughs> Krimps, say that. And I'm going to let it load. <clears throat> play the Jeopardy theme. Do, do, do. And uh, I went and edited this mission for the skin I wanted and also for the um, for the starting spot I wanted. The parking space that the base mission had you in the grass slightly. And so I put this guy over here a little bit. So there we are settling on the ramp. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that information banner on the bottom. I'm going to turn it around to the sunny side so you can see this com commemorative Air Force uh, aircraft right there and it's a pretty one uh, almost silver skin this looks like gray paint to me it's not really uh, stainless steel and I'm gonna go in the cockpit and let's go ahead and get started first we'll get bring up the head tracker now I have a head tracker that allows me to start it after I start DCS world so you may have to start your head tracker or your VR before you start DCS world uh, but mine allows me to do this and there we go and then let's go ahead and zoom into what I have my preset field of view set. I can lean forward, check over here. So starting with the in cockpit pre-flight, first thing I'll do is I'll make sure that my HOTAS switches, gear handled down, flaps are neutral, uh, throttle is back, throttles are locked together for a single engine aircraft, and let's go ahead and start on the left side. So first thing I'll want to do is I'll come over here and I'll right click on the flaps five times to bring them up to 0%, zero percent, zero degrees. <clears throat> and then I'll go ahead, I have a switch for this, but I'll bring up my air controls both forward, this one right here, all the way forward. Start with the rudder trim, all the way over to 6 degrees, thanks to Mr. Kermit Weeks. I'll put a link to his video. Kermit Weeks is a uh, longtime P-51 uh, Mustang owner in Florida that does some excellent videos uh, from the Kermie cam, if you get a good chance to check that out. Moving on up, I'll go ahead and take my propeller control, move it all the way forward right there there's my RPM control I'll make sure the throttle is three and free and unlocked coming over here I'll turn on the fuel burst booster switch I'll turn on the open up the starter I will t go ahead and take the fuel cock all the way off make sure I'm on the left tank left main and then I'll turn my magnetos all the way on and this is not per the real Mustang startup this is what DCS allows you to get away with and then I'll also uh, dial in my lights get them just where I want them right there and we'll check those rheostats they're all working yep and then I'm gonna come over here make sure my radio's off I'm gonna move the stick out of the way 
push in my brake pedals, pull out the brake handle, release the brake pedals. Now you'll see that the parking brake is set. When you see a little bit of silver in the front of it there, if you go ahead and push the pedals in, you'll see it drop in. So push pedals in, pull it out, release pedals. There, staying out. And then I will make sure that my clamshell hydro system is pushed in right here. If you do this, this releases the pri uh, hydro pressure. Uh, Kermit has a really good video on that you should check out. So I'm going to go over here in these first two switches on the front row right here on the top row. I'm going to push those two up. That turns on my battery switches. If we're going to go up above altitude today, we'll turn on the pitot heat, but we don't need that today. Make sure you leave your uh, attitude indicator caged until you have suction on the engine. And I always do it until I, I make sure I have a good amount of RPM. So I'm going to look around me, make sure nobody's around. This is the private pilot coming out of me. And then I'm going to go ahead and push up the throttle list about an inch. I'm going to hit the primer for five seconds. And then I'm going to hit the starter and hold. As soon as it coughs, right click on the mixture, throttle back. And looking good. Let me turn off the, uh, check this out, I'm going to turn off the hear like and helmet so you can hear some of the sounds. There we go. So if you have the hear like and helmet on, you get like a uh, little earplug, ear, earphone type feel. All right. So let's look around, make sure our head tracking's free and clear. Looking good. Looking good. For those of you that don't have any head tracking, let's go ahead and warm up the oil. Take it up to about 1,200 RPMs at first. And for those of you that don't have free head tracking, uh, I use Face Track No IR. I'll bring that up for you. And let's see, I can stop it. I wear it with reading glasses because my monitor is about two feet away. And I want to be able to see crispness and all the stuff, being an old guy that I am. And it seems to do pretty good. I have some Air Force issue. I got them by the flight from the flight surgeon back in the in the late, I don't know, probably the late 1990s, uh, early 2000s. So now with the engine up like that, these glasses have very thin frames, so they don't really get picked up by the uh, head tracker too bad. They actually do pretty well. All right, we are going to go ahead and, let's see, turn on our lights. Got our exterior lights on. I have all that slaved. If you guys want to see what controls I'm using, what my computer specs are, just look down at the bottom of the, of the video description. You'll see the stats for my computer and for Tyros. And we have to get Takeda's stats in there when he gets back from training out in California. So... We are going to simulate that we are all good to go. Last minute check in the cockpit. I'm going to take off with the flaps up. I'm going to go ahead and, and give it a little bit of nose trim down forward, just a hair. And then I'm going to come back just a hair. There we go. So working the trim in a Mustang is a big deal uh, and stuff. So you got your rudder trim right here. I have that set to a HOTAS switch over the throttle on my Warthog. And then the axis trims that you get from the, uh, the hat switch on the stick are normal so I just use those for the aileron and elevator trim and I always say if you're gonna center your ball down there the little ball indicator down there above the green light if you're gonna center it center the rudder first get it get it dialed in for your speed and air uh, airspeed and, uh, and attitude first if you're climbing or descending you're gonna be accelerating or slowing down so let's go ahead and push in the brakes release the brake pedal and we are gonna taxi now the Mustang, I talked to DCS Sport. He's a professional pilot in real world that is also rated in TF-51D. Uh, for He has been uh, checked out and flies the Mustang. He says that the, um, the Mustang uses a, a little bit of linkage for tailwheel flying and a lot of differential braking to get around on the ground. So we're going to check our final, make sure nobody's coming in. And we're going to check the other way, make sure nobody's taking off in our face. Right now, we're the only ones on the server, but it's always a good practice, especially if you're going to fly on, on multiplayer servers. Now, the big thing about uh, piston aircraft, for those of you that have been flying jets all your life in DCS World, is you have the left-turning tendencies. Uh, you have P-factor torque, gyroscopic precession, and other stuff that's going to basically affect you. So let's go ahead and try to center ourselves up. We're going to try to get even amounts of runway on both sides of the canopy screen there. I could lean out and look like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slowly advance the throttle. 
and we're going to let the airplane get some momentum, get some air over the tail surfaces. I have assisted takeoff turned all the way off. This is uh, as pure as you can get in DCS world. And then I'm going to push forward on the stick a little bit. And then I'm on the on the pedals. You've got to be on the pedals once you do this because now your tail's not stabilized and holding it down. Give it a little bit more gas. Let's get some airspeed up. There's 150. Let's go ahead and pull back. And we're climbing. Reach down, gear handle up. And then let's go ahead while we're under low speed. Let's close the canopy. Get that mouse back in there. There we go. I have the, the P-51 Mustang is a lot easier to do with this. Get it all the way close. There we go. And then let's recenter our head tracker there. All right, we're up in the air now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to dial back the RPMs. That's the lower gauge on the right side, uh, right below that little light. There's a little light that's that silver thing right above the red handle there on the right side. See the needle coming down? We're going to bring that down to just over 2,400 RPMs. And I'm using that on a slider on my Warthog. And then I'm going to use my throttle to man manage my manifold pressure. I'm going to bring it back to about 3600. We're going to do 3624 right now. Some of my favorite numbers, if you get the reference. And then let's go around and let's zoom in a little bit. Set. There. All right. We're flying a Mustang, guys. So that's managing the engine. And now if you look down at the ball above where the landing takeoff light is, landing gear light is, you'll notice it's a little bit to the left. So you either have to compensate with left rough putter, you're going to left rudder, left pedal. You're going to chase the ball. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little rudder trim and slowly, you'll see this in Kermit's video, I'm going to slowly get that rudder trim over to zero. And then you'll adjust your pressure off your pedals. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to eventually get it where you can fly it hands off. Light fingertip pressure right there. Now let's look over and we'll see our rudder trim is about three degrees. Now the reason that you're on the trim all the time in the Mustang is when you change power settings or airspeed you're gonna have all those forces I talked about. If you wanna if you want to uh, Google it further and get into more detail go check out Special VFR on Embry Riddle's page they have a great uh, left turning tendencies videos or just do a simple YouTube or Google search of it you'll find it. So let's make sure that we're not going to crash into anybody here, which there is no air traffic on this map right now. Let's go ahead and uh, let's practice some uh, some downwind turns and some upwind turns. Let's head back to the, let's go head over to the coast over there. I think that's coast. It's kind of a hazy day here on the Caucasus map. I haven't flown on this map in a long time. Really glad that ED decided to update it. And I'm really hoping, really, if you're listening, Mr. Gray, Make Nevada bigger and better. Remember, what happens in Vegas shows up here on DCS World. But yes, we would love to get uh, Naval Air Station Fallon uh, all the way out to the Pacific Coast, expansion past the California border, out to the Pacific Coast, get Edwards Air Force Base, 29 Palms, uh, NTC, um, Luke Air Force Base. Boy, just the endless, you know, uh, Coronado Island, uh, North Island, San Diego, we could have a lot of fun integrating Top Gun and U.S. Uh, Weapon School uh, together with uh, all the different exercises we could do in campaigns. I think it's always going to get better. So here we go. We're managing it pretty well. Double check on my ball. Now, in a real airplane, you would feel if you're skidding through the air. And the, when, you're, when you're flying uncoordinated flight, you're usually skidding through the air. And what that looks like, let's see if we can do it. I'll put it in a skid a little bit like that. See how the ball's not centered down there? And then watch. You'll see airplane, the tail is kind of following to the left. You can see how the airplane's kind of not going in a straight line. And if I center the ball, a little bit more rudder pedal. Let's go ahead and uh, reduce all that. Let's take it to zero now with this airspeed. We're doing about 275 knots right now, or 275 miles per hour, miles per hour back in these days. 
Not too bad. There's our airport over there. Let's eventually head back over there and we'll do a landing and I'll shut off the video. Again, this is a free aircraft. And um, you can find all kinds of tutorials by the big guys, the big dogs, on how to land and take off this. I always tell people, first thing I do when I'm buying a Warbird is, one, I wait for a sale. Two, I save up my, my points from the other stuff that I bought in DCS World. And then I pick it up for like $20. Uh, I got the Mustang for $14.99 on a special sale, and that was without any miles or bonus points back in the old days. Um, the Most of the World War II aircraft that I own now, I pay $25 for or half price. And uh, unless I really, really want something right at the uh, release date, I usually don't buy it on the pre-buy unless it's something like I bought the F-16 on the pre-buy, I bought the Hornet on the pre-buy. Um, what else did I buy on the pre-buy? I don't think I bought anything else really uh, on the pre-buy. Oh, the Apache on the pre-buy. That's it. Everything else I waited in, you know, a couple years till they settled in and the prices went down to a pure half price during the sales. And then I used miles or bonus points where I could. All right, here we go. There's our runway down there. We're going to go down and try to see if we can land without crashing. So, Now, this TF-51D is fun to fly. It teaches you engine management, systems management, fuels management. And I, I, I fly about 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes, and I check my fuel tanks, and then I'll switch over to the right side. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right here. I'll bring it over here and hit the mouse, and I'll go twice left-click, and it'll take it over to the fuel tank. In, in any airplane, if you start noticing something happening with the engine, think about the last thing you did. If I had an empty tank over there and I switched over, within a few minutes it'd start coughing and spitting and stuff like that. I go, hey, what did I just do? Oh, I changed tanks. Let's go back. So let's come back on the power. Let's get us down to approach speed. We're a little high for the pattern right there. Now, in the old days, in World War II, and when I was uh, learning to fly back in the, uh, in the late 90s, <clears throat> we still used what was called the gump check. And it means a lot of different stuff now because of modern airplanes. Uh, but if you're having a hard time finding some of your older aircraft uh, mappings for landing gear, and you put in landing gear or gear and you don't see it, look for undercarriage. And that's what the U is in gump check. So we're going to do the gump pack check, which is gas. Make sure I'm on the right gas tank. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to the left for this landing. And uh, undercarriage is the U. Make sure my undercarriage is good. Right now we're too fast. Let's go ahead and close that starter cover. We don't need that on anymore. Let's get it right there. All right. And then that's your warning horn. I've got that. I got a push button just like my master caution reset. I use that to turn off. That's the warning horn to say, hey, listen, you're at low RPMs with the gear up. There is a bell in the cockpit, and that light comes on. If you have the radar turned on and somebody comes up on your six, the radar shoots out a beam that senses somebody out there. And on the return bounce back from that, it says, hey, you might want to check your six. You got somebody behind you. All right, so we're going to get to our speeds. And if you look right below where the uh, where the gun sight would be, you'll see the takeoff and landing checklist. So there is uh, the speeds right there on the right side. It says land gear, 170, flaps, 165. So let's go ahead and get the way to slow down in a Mustang is to raise the nose, keep the power back. There's 180. Almost there. Let's go ahead and extend our downwind a little bit. There's 170. Let's go gear down. Verify the handle's moving. You can hear the sound. You can hear the wind sound. And green light means indicates we have two down green. Now we're going to come around. Centering our ball. Now once we're below 165, we can bring our flaps in. But you don't want to bring all your flaps in at once. You, or all your flaps out at once. You don't want to hang them out. You want to go drop it down two. 20 degrees and you can look outside and verify that yep about 20 degrees there coming in high I like to come in high on Warbird so you can see over the nose you can also raise the seat if you want and then once I'm established on final and I know I've got the runway made and good power setting 
I'll wait until I'm a little bit in close and I'll dump the flaps all the way to 100%. Well, 50, 50 degrees. It's the lowest it'll go. And it looks like it's straight down when it's at 50 degrees. It's pretty, pretty uh, radical. We'll bring up the uh, frame counter there. I am getting 109 frames with the multi-threading. Let us know in the comments what you guys think of the multi-threading for VR. I'm using uh, head track no, uh, face track no IR for head tracker. Another reason I say don't dump your flaps all the way is it'll take you forever to get to the runway. So, slight crosswind on this. Let's see where it's going. Not too bad. It's a little bit from the right. Windsock must be dragging to the left a little bit. All right. Now that we've got the runway made, go ahead and do all the flaps all the way down. And I've got that set up on a switch on my wind wing panel, the takeoff panel. I'm aiming for the numbers for my round out. And we're going to try to do a three-point attitude landing here. Coming across the threshold now. Across the numbers. There's our aim point right there. Carry a little power. And then power's all the way off, and I'm holding the nose off. Using the rudder to center. There we go. Touchdown. And with that, I'm going to take the flaps all the way up. And it's a good idea in a warbird to crack your canopy or open it before you land in the real world. Because if you crash, you'll need to get out of the aircraft pretty fast. Alright, I hope this video gets you guys into uh, considering a World War II bird in DCS World. There's a sale coming up that coincides with a steam sale that starts on the 16th. I'll have lots of information on that and I'll also do some other videos and some of the other warbirds I have. I own all of them except for the mosquito but we'll see if we can get Prickly Hedgehog on his channel to uh, feature the mosquito, the mozzie. Well that's the end of this video. Uh, share it with a friend if you guys think it might be some value and we'll see you next, next time in the next video. Cheers.